analyst, former NFL QB Dan Orlovsky, whose segment is brought to you by Ellicott Hotels. Fans, round up your family, friends, or coworkers for a fantastic game day experience at 500 Pearl. Reserve your pack, book your group event today at 500pearlbuffalo.com. This weekend might be a good weekend to do that. Uh, Dan, how you doing? Happy New Year. Glad to have you with us. Um, I guess we should begin with Buffalo's game this past Sunday. Once again, uh, another sputtering offense, slow start, uh, kind of gained some traction in the third quarter there with a touchdown drive to kind of go up by two scores. But really it was Buffalo's defense and uh, the special teams flipping the field that really made the difference in this one for them. What was your takeaways from it? Yeah, I, I agree with what you said, Chris. I, I think three things that, you know, stand out when you watch the game in a not positive fashion for Buffalo. One, it was the first time in a long time, uh, in a in a long time that this offensive line got absolutely beat up. You know, Josh was under duress for the great majority of the game. And in conjunction with that, Josh didn't really make any plays when he was under pressure. And that's, again, abnormal. I, I think... You know, he was under pressure nine different occasions, and he got 10 yards in those nine different occasions. That's abnormal for him. Um, I, I think the, the second thing was Josh played impatient. You know, there were times when New England, to what New England does, and so often many teams against Josh forced him to be patient, would not take, take check downs in the game. Again, abnormal for him. Certainly his play over the last – five or six weeks. And then there were some misses, some, some just kind of just off misses uh, that could have been bigger plays. Josh did not throw the ball. Well, it's the worst game I've seen him throwing the ball. Just when I, when it comes to throwing the ball, it's the worst game I've seen from him uh, maybe since the Denver game. Um, so just to get away with a bad performance type of win specifically on offense. I said this earlier in the week uh, yesterday, I guess, actually, but, you know, when these guys watch this film and when Josh watches it, when the offensive coaches watch it, Joe Brady, the offensive coordinator, a lot of fans don't want to hear this. But sometimes the advice is this, guys, we just got to play better. Um, yeah. it's, not, it's not sexy. It's not like, okay, now we got to run more RPOs. We got to go under center. We got to do, you know, go, take the deep ball. We got to whatever, whatever, whatever. Sometimes it's just like, guys, just play better. Um, you're not playing yeah. as well as you can play. And I know that's not a hot take or a sexy pick or anything like that. But is that kind of what we're looking at? I think specifically off this weekend, absolutely, Steve. Like, they just didn't play good. And, and I, 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 again, like, you know, their offensive line, and you have to credit New England. New England obviously playing very high-level defense. Uh, Barmore was fantastic on the interior. So they – and this is a unit offensive line-wise where – you know, I've been one of the people who have like, man, this has become a strength of this football team instead of a weakness. They just got physically beat at the point on a consistent basis. And you can see there were times they were trying to mix things up with the scheme. They tried to go under center a little bit. They tried to run some of their RPOs. And, you know, Josh just missed throws. Again, I don't I, – I, mechanically, there was nothing off. I think it's the worst passing game I've seen him – one of the worst – just – throws outside of decision making missed throws uh probably one of the worst performances of the season for josh um and, and i think that's just an abnormal thing I, I listen you get away with it and you win the game you'd rather have that be the case than going down to miami and it's showing itself in a man we win and we're in and we win the division game so you 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 find a way to win the game. That's all that matters. Um, you're going to have to play better next week, no question about it, and I think they will. Uh, quickly on the defense, you know, great performance. They get three takeaways in the first quarter. Short fields yeah. for the offense that was struggling. I mean, it was the perfect tonic for what was ailing the offense, even though they didn't cash in every time with a touchdown. Um, the mantra for Sean McDermott taking over this defense as the play caller was to get more splash plays out of this defense. They've always been a good yards against defense, good at getting off the field on third down, but they never really wowed you with big plays. They'd have some, yeah. but they wouldn't wow you. And under McDermott this year, sacks, quarterback hits, 
takeaways, you know, fumbles and interceptions. Um, they have four, you know, on Sunday. Rasul Douglas has been a revelation. He's got six takeaways in seven games with the Bills. But McDermott wanted to be more aggressive with his play calling. I think he has done that. You tell me different, but I, I think it's paid off for them. Oh, there's no question it has. In, in a year when they've dealt with devastating injuries, Sean defensively has gone back to his roots. You know, Sean learned under Jim Johnson, the longtime Philadelphia Eagles defensive coordinator that was notorious for all these exotic blitzes and pressures. And when Sean and, and Leslie Frazier were together, to your point, like the defense was really good, but you don't create splash plays the way you're ta talking about them, Chris, or or uh, like game altering or changing plays by standstill defense. And I have felt, again, good defense. I'm not trying to minimize the, the, the performance, but the defense, while it has been good over the past couple of years, has been standstill. It, it hasn't had a ton of defense defensive line movement there hasn't been a ton of pressure from any second and or the third level if you look at it now I have j just in this game alone one two three four five six different fir first down either run blitzes or run blitzes that turned into a sack so way and what I mean by run blitzes is you're you're blitzing people from your second level on first down not to overload the offense and try to get a sack. You're, you're blitzing to try to stem or move your defensive line to create a tackle for loss. That's not really been who they were under Leslie. And then their third down blitz package is tremendous when it comes to all the different places they're coming from. So I, I think, Chris, like the, the way that, that Sean has decided to just consistently change the picture for the offense, it's very different than in the years past. And it absolutely is the reason why they're still playing at such a good level. When you see this game coming up now, it's the last game of the season. Obviously, it's game 272 in the National Football League, Sunday night football yeah. for the division. Winner's the two seed. Uh, loser, if it's Miami, they're, they're the six seed automatic. And, it, and Bills may still have a chance, depending on how the other games fall. Uh, this is a big one. But Dolphins come in here. They're hobbled by injury. And they just took a big shot to the mouth from the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, how do you? What are your opening thoughts about this game and this matchup? Steve, initial thought is that six weeks ago you guys would have said this to your fan base. Everyone would have said you're crazy, you know, to go on the road week 18, win the division, be the two seed. So credit to the organization, the team, to get themselves here. Um, advantage Buffalo in this game. I felt that way before the unfortunate injury to. You know, Miami uh, in, in their defensive end, um, Bradley Chubb. I, I think offensively, this has to be a Kincaid and, and, if I'm being honest, a Shakir game. That's my initial thought. Now, if they'll finally move Steph on the inside and work Steph in the slot, it becomes Steph. But whoever's that slot receiver, Miami has showed Jalen Ramsey's not going to shadow guys. Will that keep happening without Xavier Howard playing? We'll find out. I, I, I would be. Um, I don't want to say shocked that if that doesn't happen, but they they haven't done it really outside of the Jets game. So it's got to be the middle of the field people in the pass game. Uh, number two, because of the lack of edge guys now with Phillips and Chubb out, this this is a game where you know Josh Josh should be very comfortable in the pocket and patient. You know Vic is going to take away. Um, the easy completions, and he's going to force you to be patient. I promise everybody Miami will play drop eight coverage in this game. They will rush three people. They will play drop eight coverage. The discipline to hand the football off will play its part. And then I think defensively, you know, they were so good last time they played. They didn't overreact to motions. Uh, they played in their too high shell. Obviously, Milano played in that game. Um, the second level of their defense is going to be paramount when it comes to get to your landmark, don't listen to his eyes. And if they can do that, advantage Buffalo. Right. And then, you know, the, the Dolphins have been very good at home. Their only loss is to the Titans in a game that they frittered away after almost being gift-wrapped by Tennessee, you know, with two yeah. turnovers inside their 20, you know, with under eight minutes to play uh, to give them the lead back. And then they couldn't hold on to it. And that loss is proving costly because – it, it's the reason what's on the table is on, what's on the table in addition to the Baltimore loss. So 
psyche wise, do you feel like a Dolphins team, they are seven and one this season, can still muster up some desperation, knowing how important it will be for them going forward to play playoff games at home as opposed to on the road? Yeah, Chris, I think there's part of that. There's desperation, and then there's, um, you know, win or go home type of mentality you know and in one team buffalo has a win or go home mentality i know there's the chance that even if they lose they could still get in but i promise you no player and or coach thinks in that capacity so you've got one team that knows their season and not only like their season is on the line with the chance to get the playoffs is really outside of buffalo or excuse me baltimore like anybody can go win it anybody that that gets in. So you're not only thinking, oh, our playoff life is on the line. You're thinking, hey, we can get in, we can go beat anybody. And so I think that there's more of the the mindset for their, the players of, it, it, you know, we have to go win this game or we're done. And I think you'll come out, you'll see a, a way more aggressive football team than you have in the past two weeks. Um and Miami's got a lot to play for, but I think Buffalo has a little bit more of the live or die mentality. Dan, thanks as always. Thanks, Appreciate Dan. the time. We'll catch up with you next week. Enjoy, guys.